more convincing. Um, I'm going to talk about how sky and water in your painting relate to one another and how to make that relationship um, convey more mood and to make your water more convincing. What I have set up here for you is my um, Raymar panel and it's a linen panel and I'm just going to use it to sort of do some um, some small oils, oil paintings to sort of give you an idea of what I'm talking about when I talk about having your sky and water relate to one another. All right. Um, I'm using my arm palette today. So uh, you won't be able to see it while I'm mixing, but this uh, is just to give you the colors. There are some colors on here I'm not going to be using, but what I am going to be using is my ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, cadmium red, medium, uh, cadmium yellow, light, uh, my uh, titanium zinc white, and um, maybe I'll use a little bit of my cadmium orange. All right. So uh, I'm going to just do these as little uh, oil, uh, like little thumbnails almost, because okay. I just want to talk about like in a painting, when you have sky and water, they should relate to one another. And that will make the, the water look more convincing and also make it look like the sky relates to the water that's underneath it. So let's just start off here with a couple of little, little paintings. So this is really more about um, uh, some basic techniques and just concepts behind it. Okay. So I've put my horizon line just a little bit below um, halfway. Just any just way you of, can get that camera any closer. Uh, yeah, I can scooch it a little closer. Scooch, I like that word, scooch. Yeah. That's better, thank you. <laughs> How's that? Does that look yeah. pretty good? I've Perfect. got it kind of, so I'm going to be reaching in a little bit from the side here, but, yeah. um, but you'll get the idea. So um, somebody was asking me about whether I start light to dark or dark to light. And it kind of depends on that, um, the mood I'm going for. So I think with this first painting, I'm just going to sort of uh, give you a kind of straightforward, let's say that it's a calm water day. Um, you know, with maybe some clouds in the sky. So it's a pretty straightforward reflection type situation. So uh, let me, I'm mixing up a little bit of my colors here. So here down towards the horizon, don't worry, I'll brush over this so you can see it. Um, I'm not gonna mix it absolutely perfectly, but let's sort of have the, the sky and the horizon kind of move away from us a little bit. I've made it a little bit warmer towards the, towards the horizon. Maybe I made it just a little bit too dark. So if I do that, and then kind of come in with, let's have sort of a cloud here. I'm gonna sort make it, um, yeah. <laughs> Clouds move around. They can Lamia Deeb says you were one of her favorites from Realism Live. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I'm really glad to hear that. You know, the reward of um, demonstrating or teaching in any way is to help someone else open a door in their work. And I know that's what's always been really helpful to me. So if there's anything that I can say um, that's going to help um, folks do that, then that's that's a good day for me. Awesome. I mean, I've picked up a lot of things over the years, you know, not just from my dad and my uncle and cousins and such, um, but from other artists. And all those little things kind of help you um, when you're thinking while you're painting, kind of help you run through things to problem solve, to like get certain effects you're looking for. Um, so right now, I'm just sort of um, scumbling this in. I hope that's kind of see on the camera. But uh, normally when I do this, I would paint the, the water at the same time. So I just wanted to do it a little differently to give you an idea of some of the possibilities of it. So let's say we're just going to have the water, um, this cloud, it's calm water. So it's just going to be reflected directly in the water. So I'm gonna um, 
kind of just scumble this in this way. Uh, scumbling is just a way for me of saying, I'm just getting the, um, the paint on canvas. I'm not being precise with my brushwork. Um, I'm just kind of getting it down there. And this is obviously just working kind of quickly to, to get the effect of it. Um, and then I'm going to show you some different ways that that can be influenced. So here you're starting to see just kind of a very basic uh, reflection. Someone was asking me about uh, why I use vertical brush strokes in the water. And I thought this was kind of a great opportunity to follow up on that because I didn't really get into it much previously. Um, but when things are reflected in the water, any little ripple in the water is going to pull that down. It's going to pull that reflection down. It has the effect of stretching the image. So if you use the brush stroke, a vertical brush stroke, you're kind of even without any other information in your painting, you're kind of broadcasting that, that idea, even without knowing that, that that's what, what that is. If I have it stretched down more, then that might mean that there's, there's more, um, more wave action. So, I'm going to do one other little little piece here that's going to make it make us have a, an image that we can adapt to different kinds of different kinds of effects. So I'm just going to put in. I thought about do, what do I put a boat in there? Do I put in a tree or some other thing? So I'm just going to kind of lay in. Uh, let's just call it a strip of marsh or something. So just something that's going to be kind of in between these. Now, I'm going to use, um, if I'm doing marsh grass, and plus I'm working over a thick, lighter paint, I'm just going to use a little bit of a vertical stroke just so that you, the viewer, can see what I'm doing here. If I want to make it more interesting, then I can vary it a little bit. I can have Maybe part of it be a little cooler, a little darker. And then I can even dip into that uh, cadmium orange that I was showing you earlier, just to kind of, oops, uh, just to kind of give it a little more interest for the sake of this demo. Again, I'm just, I'm not even using little brushes, except this one's kind of little, but I'm trying to keep this very simple. So um, just so you can kind of see on the palette, this is how it's, um, how I have it mixed up. I kind of keep my colors pretty organized on the palette. That kind of helps me keep my painting organized. So let's use that as just sort of our most basic reflection, sky and water. And again, by using these little vertical brush strokes, it kind of helps it read more as, as water, even without a whole lot of other information. So let's say that we took the, the same kind of idea. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll change the sky just a little bit. I'm going to just, again, to scumble in. Just, just trying to put some, some paint on the canvas. It's not a bad idea to put more than you think you might need. What are you dipping into? Uh, this, my medium is a little linseed oil with um, a little bit of distilled turpentine and a little bit of varnish in it. Okay. So I use, I use some of that at the beginning. And then as I tend to paint, I use less and less. Um, and right now I'm not doing much of an underpainting, obviously. I'm just kind of blocking all this in uh, straight away. So if I did something similar with putting the straight reflection in, then I'm going to change it this time. And I'm going to have the water be a little bit different. But let's just for the sake of 
teaching this idea, let's just kind of paint it in a very similar way. You know, I think a lot of us struggle with the value of the sky, how dark or light it should be. Do mm -hmm. you have any tips or thoughts on that? Actually, I do. It's, it's interesting because um, I've been on a big learning curve with that myself and um, alternating between thinking, oh, I need to make my skies lighter. I need to make them darker. Um, it's really... Uh, important to remember that the sky is generally, you know, so much lighter than what we're seeing on the ground. And in this iPhone era, I think a lot of people notice that because you take a picture of something, although now the phone's automatically correct it. Yeah. <laughs> but you take a picture of something and the sky is either washed out or the, um, and the land is all way too dark or, um, or the, the land ends up so dark just if it tries to get the sky. So um, to answer your question, Eric, I would say, um, remember that it's sky, it's light, it's full of light and water is dark. So if the water is perfectly calm, it will reflect the sky. You, uh, you can see I've painted it um, a little bit more green in my second sketch. So I'll try to make them a little bit more comparable. So, if there's if there are ripples on the water if there's movement in the water then it's going to mean that more of the you're seeing more into the um what's below the surface you know think of the the surface of the water is is really a mirror so it's it's just reflecting what's above it but it also has its own local color which is what I call the color of the object itself or this or the surface. So if you have, um, uh, let's say we have a muddy bottom here. Then I have, I have a muddy bottom. Just saying. <laughs> we have, so let's say it's muddy waters with a muddy bottom. As it gets closer to us, we're going to see more of the influence of that local color. So maybe this, let's do something drastic. Let's put this in here. And this would be kind of that muddy bottom kind of color. So I don't know where I live here on Chesapeake Bay. It, it can be, it's got some reds and greens in it. It's kind of a um, very warm kind of tone. So what I'm going to show here is just, I still have the same relationship between the sky and the water, but now it's starting to get more um, disturbance through it. So let's say I bring in some, some actual waves. So waves are, what happens is we start looking into what's underneath. I'm gonna have to um, drag my brush over this so you can kind of see. Uh, I never heard it described that way, but it makes a lot of sense. So part yeah, of that so reflection opens it. up and you're seeing more of the bottom if you're close up. So you're up looking or, into it, right. Or the deep so here, color. So we're seeing the, the color of the bottom right here. I'm doing these little vertical brush strokes just so that you can see the color of the paint I'm putting down. Otherwise the light will, will catch the glare. So what happens then is the color, oops, um, You'll notice I do a lot of oopsing when I'm painting. <laughs> so what happens then is the color, the reflection gets, it catches on the tops of the waves. I've just made these very regular, more regular than they would be just for the sake of demonstrating. So, um, so you start to see more of the reflection from the sky this way. Maybe I'll give them a little, a little movement this way. Mm 
must not forget perspective when we're painting water, you know, Always. making sure that the, the ripples get closer and closer together as they get further and further away. Exactly. And as the, as you point out, cause from the side, we're looking at, let's say in this situation, we're looking at this. So if we're looking from here, then, you know, our perspective, our line of sight, as you point out, is doing this. So they're getting closer as they get closer to the horizon. But also remember, if you're looking here, you're looking, you're seeing the bottom. And then this part will reflect what's up here. And then this part will reflect what's up here. And so on. And so, and here you're seeing the bottom. Oops. <laughs> So let's say that, 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 that. Sometimes scribbling is the best way to teach because rather than me just doing a painting from beginning to end, it's a better way to kind of um, dis discuss and de describe some of the concept behind. So um, John, John Stobart told me that, um, it, you know, if you look at these ripples, the ripples are the shape of a, essentially the shape of a roof of a house. Mm -hmm. And so it, you look at how a roof catches the light and then where the ground plane catches the light more differently, et cetera. So what happens is you're getting, you know, you're, you're getting um, a lot of different variety and that's what creates that, you know, that, that ripple effect in the water. Exactly. And those ripples you know, different parts of the sky will reflect on different parts of the wave. So it could be that on, you know, part of the wave, like if you're looking again at the profile, maybe it's just the very tippy top. Let's say that only the very tippy top here is reflecting the sky that's right above it. Right. So when you're careful, when you're painting it, you know, it's going to be kind of right in there. And that kind of, that's how you, start to get this convincing illusion of water is by doing by doing that um you know it's it's about trying to capture that structure and when you're out there painting on location sometimes it's easier to see that um because it's all kind of jumping right out at you yeah but it's moving but it's moving but still if you understand what you're looking at then it's just so much easier you're the first you know, to ever explain the idea that you're looking through to the bottom. That is like, that's a big deal for me. Oh, good. Well, cause one of the, um, one of my favorite things to do is to kind of show how, uh, if you, let's say we're, um, let me, I'm going to have to mess up a different brush than I was going to. I, I try to keep my brushes sort of dedicated for certain purposes, but Let's say if I go down here, can you see? Yeah, you can see. So let's say I have the bottom. Here's the bottom. Pick up whatever bottom color you have. And sometimes, you know, let's say you're in the tropics. Sometimes it's like a really beautiful um, white. turquoise yeah, white. bottom. Yeah, it's like, um, yeah, white sand beach. Let's, let's say um, one of those kind of pink sand beaches kind of places. I mean, mix up a little little bit of something that'll be a good good stand in for for that concept so if that's one side uh let me over here do a kind of hmm, that's close but not exactly what i want but let me um sometimes the sand is so reflective in these like beautiful tropical places that the value is almost the same as as, as the other my aunt Jonette always hammers home the point that you know water is so much darker than you think it is you know darker and heavier and i think that's that's sort of stuck in my head a lot because i think it's really um a, a really good thing to to remember um so all right so let's say let's say uh yeah and this wave thing actually is something i picked up from my dad um because he's kind of a stickler for that kind of thing to make sure that you have 
the perspective and the structure of the wave in your mind while you're while you're painting. So if I carry this up a little bit, and then I do the same thing over here, carry that up. This is just a great little way to paint in plein air um, water when you have waves. Um, so then let's say we have sky up here. Let's say this part of the, and I'm like imagining, like picture that I'm just taking like a little piece of this and that's where I'm painting now, right here. So if this part is reflecting sky and that's reflecting, and that's looking through to the bottom, if you just do a little bit of painting down into this, I'm trying to mix up something that'll lay over this pretty quickly. When you do a brush stroke, dragging something light through something dark, remember your brush is now kind of a little soiled with that color. You, and if you wanna keep it clean, just wipe off your, your brush then. If you're working- I noticed you dipped your brush into your medium and then wiped it off. I did. I did, because it just made it a little easier to get it off. Oil cleans oil. That's right. That's right. So. So if you if you're looking at the bottom and as the way as you get back further away from the shore, uh, the bottom is going to change color because there's more water over it. Uh, it's going to get a deeper color. How do you how do you know what to do there? Well, it, it's going to depend on what happens with the bottom. If it, um, in a lot of places, it trails off into something deeper. So, um, so here you go. So this is just to kind of show. So there you're looking through to the bottom. And then as you go up, as you say, maybe there's more water over it. And if the water is the same depth, then maybe you're going to um, still kind of look through it. Yeah. Um, and then, but if let's say you're looking out into the ocean, then it's going to drop off to the deep blue. So if that happens, then you're going to want to start adding some, and it's not depending, it all depends where you are, but it's probably going to have some greens and even some violets in there, or coral reefs. So as you get up here, maybe let's say like, there's a sandbar and then it drops off into something deeper. So all these things will influence, you know, what's happening. You know, what you're seeing, let's say there's, you know, you can put some variety in the, in what you're seeing in the bottom, even if the water's super clear, if the water's not super clear, then obviously you, you don't really want to do that. So I don't know if you can, you know, if this is kind of, helpful to see this. I was going to go back to doing maybe a couple more of these uh, thumbnails so you can kind of see a little bit more of um, how the, the sky and the water are going to influence each other. But I think you can start to see what I'm doing with, with this, where as you get you know, at the bot, as, as the water approaches you, you're looking more into the water. As it gets away from you, you're seeing more of whatever it, it's reflecting. So here, if I wanted to bring some waves in here, some ripples that are catching the, the light from up above, uh -huh. then I can kind of drag that in there. And again, I'm just uh, dragging this brush stroke down just a little bit so you can see, because I know the glare is probably catching on the canvas a little bit. I'm working pretty thickly here, just because, as I mentioned before, it's a little easier to kind of push paint around once you've got a good, a good quantity on here. So let's say that as we're moving away, we're looking more but the, into the... Um, these are the faces of the waves where you might see that color. 
of the bottom or the depths. If you're in really deep water, it can get really, really dark. So let me put up my other panel here since I'm using up all the real estate. Does that sound good? Yep. Oh, you're doing you can... that. Why don't I take a quick break? Okay. And, and uh, that way you can kind of not have, not be under a lot of pressure. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so our guest today is Lisa Egley, and we're talking about how to make skies and water more convincing, especially water and using the sky. Uh, Lisa has a brand new video coming out. This will be her second with Streamline Paint Tube, and we're excited about that. Um, let's see if I can have something about it here. That beautiful way the wave caught the light, the foam and the shape of every little swirl. I want to understand how waves roll in, what they look like, what the structure of them is you really see the importance of knowing what it looks like. This is Lisa Egley. Welcome to my workshop on painting crashing waves. This video is unique because I've actually set it up so that I'll be painting from waves that are moving just as we see when we're out painting and plein air. I'm gonna share my ideas about taking a subject that's moving and alive and trying to capture it in a obviously still painting. If we take some of the structure we're looking at, if we plan a little bit and understand something of our subject, that it's really not so hard and all we have to do is get out there and try it. I think artists are intimidated sometimes about painting the ocean with the waves crashing because everything's moving and everything's changing. In this video, I'm gonna show how if we understand something about the form and the colors and what's actually going on with the waves, we can capture some of that and put it in our painting. My approach to plein air painting is to plan, to understand my subject, to sketch out what I intend to do, but then to just get out there and do it and to paint often and enthusiastically and to be in touch with the subject and my own connection to the subject and bring some of that uh, passion to my painting. The perfect fit for this course is a student who would love to paint water that's moving but feels intimidated from doing so. So if you've been wanting to paint the ocean but you think everything's moving, everything's changing too fast and it's just too hard to do, Grab your painting kit, follow along, let's set aside the fear of painting a scene where everything is moving and changing very quickly. And let's set up and learn what we need to do to create the painting that we envision of the ocean. So I've... Um put up a, a new panel to kind of further the demonstration. Here's what we did before. So kind of, it's really more going over concepts and I wanna kind of put those things together a little bit more. I'm gonna start similarly to how I did earlier and I'm gonna show a couple different ways that these, um, that the, the light can do things in a, in a painting. Um, and the way that makes the water kind of look like water. I mean, that's something that we're all trying to do if we're painting water. So I've put my horizon line in this particular one a little bit higher because I want to talk a little bit more about the way that the waves can kind of stretch the reflection down. So let's say we have our sky up here. Whoops, I made that a little bit, a little bit too thin, a little too much medium. I'm, I'm trying to kind of lay the, the color on a little bit more thickly so that then we can push the paint around. And as Eric said, normally when I'm painting, it's, you know, if I'm doing a demo, I, I might, it'll be a lot more, um, a lot more detailed. Today we're just kind of talking about concepts and just some tips really to help get uh, certain effects. 
a little bit more effectively. So if I put, uh, you know, let's, we have our sky again with maybe a couple of little clouds for the sake of having something to reflect in the water. Now, if that is, here we have a little lay in where the land is. That's where our horizon is. That's where the land's going to be. And I thought it might be helpful to kind of put in something like a, like a tree or something to kind of uh, show what I mean about reflection. So let me just put a few brush strokes here for a tree. And I'm not going to make it too tall, but just something to show the idea of the reflection. So if that's the tree. I'm picturing like maybe a little pine tree and an area that's getting flooded or something. So the water is a reflection of the sky, but it's also influenced by the local color, what I was pointing out earlier. So it's going to be a little bit um, tinged with the local color of the bottom. Even in a perfectly mirrored, you know, Maxwell Parish kind of reflection, it's going to be influenced by that. So closer towards us, we start to see the bottom coming through a little bit more. And then as we move up, we're seeing more of the reflection. Eric, you like to do a lot of painting the, uh, the water. You spend a lot of time near the water and your trip to the Adirondacks and such. And I do. As a matter of fact, you mentioned Maxfield Parish. I, last night, I was trying to do a, 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 you know, as you know, we learn by copying masters. And so I took... Mm -hmm three uh, Maxfield Parish paintings and combine them into one painting uh, just because I wanted my own different composition. And I'm trying to learn how he did his reflections and how he did, you know, his, how he made these unbelievably brilliant colors work. Yeah. And he actually used mirrors, you know, to capture those reflections, which is great if you have, you know, a Maxfield Parish calm, <laughs> calm day, um, or a pond, which a lot of his were like mill ponds or. Well, he ponds. built, he actually built models of many of his mm -hmm. paintings. I know. And I know little. it's, it's, you know, a lot of people build models. Um, you know, even people painting ships on the sea, uh, Tom, Thomas Hoyne, the famous illustrator and also Marine painter, um, had quite a collection of models, ships models that he had built of the schooners that he painted. Um, yeah, man, many artists will do that. All right, so let's, so this reflection is gonna get pulled down because I'm picturing, let's, let's put some ripples in here. So this is gonna have some ripples and you're like, wait, where's the tree reflection? So that tree reflection is gonna get pulled down by every little wave. So every little wave that comes through here is going to reflect that on one part of it, one part of the wave, and it's going to stretch that item down. So it'll keep reflecting down. You've probably all seen when you have a, a moon rise, you know, and let's say the moon is is there and then there's a disturbance in the water if the moon is there then the disturbance in the water is going to pull it down right like that and just by doing that you immediately get some of the uh wateriness feeling like right away it just kind of pulls you know pulls it down we can use what i was just talking to about earlier about the bottom showing through to kind of do the reverse where this bottom color that's down here is going to pull up into there. Because again, the if from the side, if the waves look like this, then 
some of them are going to have like sky on top. And then this is assuming that let, let's assume that here's, here's your eyeball. Here's the artist's eye and you're looking that way. So when you look here, you're going to be seeing what's down here and here you're going to be seeing what's down here. This is just repeating what I was saying earlier, but now you're looking at it, but here you're seeing what's up here. It's the sky. And then even, you know, it's even more subtle than that. Like this part is a little mirror reflecting whatever is up here. Sometimes if you go out on like a really uh, beautiful crystal clear early morning, there's this like really cool effect that happens where like maybe the sky, maybe the water is this amazing uh, blue. I guess in the morning, this is more of a East Coast phenomenon of the US. So if you're elsewhere around the world, depending which way you're looking, you'll see. So what's happening if you get this is you're seeing whatever is like up above your head, that's that color, but maybe, um, maybe the sun's just coming up. Sorry, while I'm talking, I'm mixing up the next color to kind of give an idea of, uh, I'm, I'm picturing a sunrise now. So I'm like, okay. gonna lay in and I'm gonna, dip a little bit more medium in there because I'm just going to put it in a little bit more uh, fluidly. And this is when I'm also going to dip in a little bit more to that cadmium orange. But when you, so you might think, oh, well, when I'm painting this way, I'm not really talking about the relationship between the sky and the water but you are. Well, you're laying down a foundation. It's a foundation, but the relationship is, let me do a little <laughs> eraser thing here. If we're, let's say our eyeballs here again, and we're looking this way. If the wind is such, it's blowing the water this way, you know, if the wind is pushing the waves, this is the way it pushes them. And let's say our sun's coming up here. I know this is very sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> but what you're seeing, think about it, is that the sun is hitting the faces of the waves. Again, wind pushes water and makes it do that, right? We've all seen waves that look like that. And the so, faces are hidden from our eyes. So only the faces are facing the sunshine. They're getting the sun. This is reflecting what's up above us, which is the sky we're going to get later in the day or, you know, whatever, once the sun is up. So it's kind of a cool effect if you, I mean, you've probably all seen it, but if you haven't, you know, go out there in the morning or the evening or whichever um, time of day when you have a, a wind blowing away from you. And wind at your back. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Front, wind is at your back, blowing away from you. So you're the person here. There's your. So you need a little cloud with here you a are. mouth on it blowing the wind. <laughs> so, yeah. So you need to know where the wind blows. So here you are. There's Eric. He's looking at the. So looking there. And And you're looking here. And so there's the sky color like that. This is, you see, we're looking at, it's a cross section. And then the sun is hitting here on the face of the waves. Now, let's say there's um, a place where that doesn't happen. Like maybe there's a calm spot somewhere in between there. Then this would be the calm. Let's say there's an oil slick, God forbid, or I don't know, some calm area in there. So you're kind of using the movement of water to kind of, you're using the, the color and the light to show how the water is moving. So this is reflecting this. 
Does that make sense? Yep. So it's pretty clear. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that stuff's really cool. And I like to play around with it. I like to look at it when I'm out there um, painting. And it's part of what gets me excited about the beauty we see out in, in nature. So here I'm just going to uh, sneak back over to this little sketch that I had going to show. So the, you know, we have this big cloud here. It's still going to reflect, but it's, it's going to be pulled down because there's movement in the water. Here there's movement in the water, but it's just, that's why we see that beautiful blue, but it makes the water kind of more convincing, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Now in your new video, you're going to show us how to do white caps and how to do the, mm -hmm. when the, when the water is moving and capture the light, when it's flipping over all of that stuff. Right. So if we were coming, so let's say we, you know, pretend that the water is, there are these waves coming in on us now. What happens if we put something like this in? Then it starts to read as that's a wave that's coming in and rising up this way. And so if we're looking into it, we're seeing the bottom. Yeah. Seeing the sandy bottom. Although here, you're not just going to, because it's also backlit, they're more complicated. It's always more complicated, right? <laughs> but the more you understand these things, the more you can get them in your paintings and you can capture things that maybe frustrated you before. If, um, if that becomes surf, then maybe there's a little part where the wave's breaking. Yeah, so in the video, I talk more about kind of, it's more of watching moving surf come in. But the principles are the same, and it's, it's understanding what you're looking at that's going um, to help you not get frustrated when you're trying to paint something challenging like moving water. Outstanding. Well, Lisa, why don't you come back on camera so we can say goodbye properly? Sure, absolutely. So tell me a little bit about this new video. We're excited about it. Do you want to just kind of give your perspective on it? Sure. Um, I'm really excited about it. It was really um, great to uh, plan it and to think about um, how to uh, teach something that seems to be intimidating for a lot of people, which is how do you paint moving water? Uh, when I'm painting on the beach, people come up to me and say, I would never do that. It's just, you know, I couldn't capture it. And once you really start breaking it down and thinking about it, it's, it's, um, it's not that complicated. And the, the biggest thing to do is to learn a few tips and to just get out there and do it. Well, isn't that the way anyway, as if things seem like they're totally intimidating until somebody just teaches you and you get that aha moment and you're such a good teacher. I mean, I oh, had an aha you. moment today when you talked about seeing the bottom through the waves. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, actually very personally looking forward to, to watching it myself. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, slip in and get one soon. And okay. uh, <laughs> I have friends well, in high places, but uh, <laughs> painting the sea, you can get it at PaintTube.tv. And Lisa's going to be on uh, tomorrow, the 15th at 3 PM. And uh, so she's going to be uh, doing a little bit of a sample of that video then. So Lisa, thank you so much. Oh, you're and, welcome. Thanks, and, Eric. And thank you also for being on uh, on uh, Realism Live last week. It was a lot of fun. Oh, that was a pleasure. And I, I love talking to other artists. And I was really happy to have a couple things that people found helpful. Because I certainly oh, yeah. learned a lot. So, well, You're so great. humble and you're such a good teacher. Thank you oh, again. Thanks,